Okay, all three. Oh. All right. <laughs> so 72, let's see, what's it? Hey. Oh, determine the sum of the first hundred odd natural numbers. Is that the one? Yes. So the, the first 100 odd natural numbers. So there's a lot to unpack there. So the natural numbers start at what? One. Good. So the ones that, the ones that came naturally to us. There's one rock, two rocks, three rocks. Uh, and I want the odd natural numbers, and I want the first hundred of them. So the biggest mistake I see people make is in the formula. I'll say people put one plus a hundred. But what, what's supposed to go here? What, what's supposed to go here? So in, 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 careful. That sounds closer to right? It sounds closer to right. So it's got to be the first number plus the last number, right? Because that's the repeated sum. So the last number is not 100, because we're talking about the first 100 odd numbers. So the first number is 1, and the second number is 3, and the third number is 5. No, no, no. So uh, if I included even and odd, the first 100 would be up to 100. So the first 100 odd is going to be past 100. You guys kind of with me? Cool. So how would you go about finding out what the hundredth term was? There's two ways you could do it. You can just reason it out, or you can actually just use the formula. Let's try the formula so we all remember what the hell the formula is. What's the formula? And I sort of gave it away here for the sum formula, but what's, what kind of sequence is this? Do I keep adding something or do I keep multiplying something? Uh, I keep adding what? Two. Two. I like it. So it's got to be what kind? Uh, arithmetic. Arithmetic. I like it. Cool. So that would mean that the nth term, what's the formula for that? A1. A1. So I start here and I go this many steps, right? So then you can just do, to figure out A100, you would say, I start at one and I go 99, right? 100 minus one times two. So then what's the hundredth term gonna be? So now I know the hundredth number, I can put it there. I know the first number, I can put it in. And I know there's a hundred of them. So don't let that confuse you. If I do the first hundred numbers, that's one through a hundred. Sure, but this is the first hundred odd numbers. So that's going to go past a hundred, because then that would only be about half if I stopped it near a hundred. All right, so, so if I do the first hundred multiples of three, oh shit. <laughs> now you're going to go even further past. Okay. And the crowd gives no reaction at all. They say, Jeff, try to figure us out. Oh, shit. Any other questions from home? Yes. Uh, 5.825B. Oh, okay, so, oh. So this is what I was talking about, I think, towards the end. Um, 
select any two one-digit numbers, non-zero, and add them to attain a third number, and continue doing that to be a Fibonacci-like sequence. So you can start, so I would, I don't know, let's say I'll start with two and, 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 and then nine. So now we go 11, 9, 11 is 20, 11 and 20 is 31, and they say they go out, uh, oh, they just say they keep going, <laughs> that's evil, <laughs> sorry, they don't tell you when to stop, do they? Oh boy, it's evil. Anybody still doing that? Anybody just go home and you just keep working on it? All right. What about the 18 million terms? Um, so I would say, like on a test or something, I would say take it out to the to the eighth place. Normally the eighth, ninth term is good enough to get close to the ratio, the golden ratio. So uh, if you keep going. So here I would take like 31 divided by 20. That's not really far enough yet. But what is 31 divided by 20? And then we go one more term. What would the next term be? 51. 51. And if I do 51 divided by 31, it'll get closer to the golden number, which is what's the golden ratio? 1.618. Kick ass. I like it. So, 1645. And you'll notice they kind of. Uh, no matter what you pick, they're gonna kind of bounce around 1.618. Below it, above it, below it, and they go, mm, they kind of, it's almost like a little sine wave. This, they're approaching 1.618 from both sides. If you if you catch what I'm saying. So above it, below it, above it, like the price is right game. Higher, lower. Okay, okay. So that always freaks me out, those kind of things, no matter what numbers. And of course, they say start with two one digit it doesn't matter what two numbers you start with. You can start with pi and square root of 13.8. I doubt, I, I wouldn't do that. And I'm the geekiest person in this room probably, right? But it's still, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to do it, so i got to take that back, sorry. But uh, I'm not going to do it, don't worry. But even if you did, if you go out far enough, you take a ratio, it's going to be close to 1.618. It's, it's, it's kind of a little insane to think that it doesn't matter where you start. Okay. So that's what that's talking about, that problem. Is that cool? Whoever asked that? Yes. Is it good? What's the, what's I, the matter? I, I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around it, that's all. Oh, trying to figure out why it is or how to do it? How to do it. So give me two numbers. 7 and 13. I'll allow it. It said two one-digit numbers, but who cares? Right. Screw, screw them. I'm with you. I'm not being mean. I'm saying, yeah, screw them. It shouldn't matter what two numbers you pick to start with. And then what's your next number? 20. And what's your next number? 33. And then? 53. And then? 86. Oh, my God. And then, and then maybe do a few more. But, but right now, I'll take 53 divided by 33. And then take 86 divided by 53. And then take the next one. And you'll see that they are coming closer and closer to the golden ratio. Okay. I guarantee it. Okay. Now, real quick, obviously, if you start with zero and zero, I'm going to see if any smart asses do that. Jeff, I, I, it's not working for me. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do for you. Uh, that's obviously going to be, that's what we call the trivial sequence. Right? It, this actually matches an infinite number of patterns. This is adding these two. This is adding these three. This is adding the first 18 to get the next one. This is multiplying the first one by seven. This is multiplying the first one by negative pi. Do you see how it matches? That's why we call it the trivial sequence. It matches an infinite number of definitions. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. If you don't, it's not crucial. It's okay. You know, but don't do that. It won't get you anywhere. Adding zero to itself. Um, Okay, anything else from homework? Yes. Oh, good. So this is the one I was talking about. <laughs> You're like, that's yeah, good for you, Jeff. Um, the Lucas sequence is found, blah, 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 blah. blah. Well, what do they tell you about it? The Lucas sequence is formed in a manner similar to the first two numbers of the Lucas sequence are one and three. Oh, okay. Uh, this is not the one I was talking about. 
I forgot what the name of the one I was talking about was. Uh, remember I said start with three ones and then add the three to get the next one, add the next three to get the next one. That's a different pattern. This one is still Fibonacci-like. It just starts specifically with one and three. So if it's Fibonacci-like, what must the next one be? Four. four. One plus three is four, and then, and then seven. seven, and then 11. Eleven. Eleven, okay. And then they ask you, that's part A. Write the first eight terms, so just keep going until you get eight of them. And part B says, now we're going to see a couple of interesting things about this. If I write the Fibonacci sequence, a few of the elements here, and then I write the Fibonacci sequence kind of offset a little bit, right? And they actually have this in the book, so it's not something they ask you to do. Uh, and they say, what do you get when you add these together? Well, you get 3, 4, 7, 11. I mean, you can go, I keep saying the word insane, but it's true. You know, a little insane is trying to figure out all the possible interconnections between the Fibonacci and itself. I think I assigned some problems to talk about the, the fifth one is the square, the third one added to or something. There's all these weird little interplays within the Fibonacci sequence. Some of them are important. Some of them are like, okay. Is that, is that cool? That's all they mean. They didn't mean anything crazy. Okay. Anything else? Is that cool? Okay, okay. All right. So I want to get into chapter eight, uh, metric system. Have you guys ever traveled to Canada or you know somewhere that they don't use our freaky system? Yes. Uh, have you driven there? No. No. I went to Canada, and when I came back, I think I told you that it's a story, I can't remember now. Uh, it freaked me out when I saw the first speed limit sign. I'm like, oh my god, that's slow as hell. Oh, it's miles an hour. Okay, thank god. So you have to, when you go to Canada, you have to look at the other, you have, a, you have your speedometer on one side are miles per hour, and the other side are kilometers per hour, so you got to train your brain to look at the other side. And you're like, all right, I'm going 180 right now. That's not much. So part of what we're going to do in Chapter 8 is, how do I convert 180 kilometers an hour to miles per hour so I can make that make sense to uh, a poor American throwing up the world without metric, right? We need our own kind of fun little commercial, oh, look at these people without the metric system, do something for them. Uh, you guys don't even know what you're missing. Um, what else do you guys know about the metric system, just to throw it out there? Anybody know, what do you know about the metric system? Base 10 system. Yes. The units, uh, conversions are remarkably easy. Does anybody know how many tablespoons there are in a gallon? Tablespoons in a gallon. I don't have a freaking clue. Much. Yeah, <laughs> the number of tablespoons in a gallon is too damn high. That's an old meme, I'm sorry. Um, but it's not easy. Metric, every step I take is a step of 10. Makes freaking sense, right? We got eight, 10 figures, I almost said eight. We got 10 fingers, we should use a system based on 10, but it's too late for us, America. It's too late for us. We're too entrenched. Um, anybody else know anything at all about metric? Anybody work out at a gym? Have you ever looked at the weights? Very often they list pounds and kilograms. So you can kind of work out the conversion. Say so again? It's mainly kilograms now, at least where I work out. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, where I work out, it's, it's, they got both on there. And as a math guy, I'm always geeking out about that because then you can see the conversion right there. All right. Any anything else about metric that you've ever heard? Anybody actually use metric? Anybody move here from somewhere that, or, or you use metric how? Chemistry. Chemistry. Exactly. The language of science uses metric because the, the world uses metric. Right? We're one of three countries on the face of the earth that does not use metric. What are the other two? I forget. Uh, I used to know. I haven't looked them up in a while. Why? Sorry. Second. Why are we only? Why are we one of three? Because we just never changed. We we. I, to, to be honest, I don't know the real history, but I'm sure it would be have to be partially <coughs> psychotherapy history. I mean, as far as you know, you know, we got the right way to do things. We don't want to change it, or it's just the way that we we developed. And the funny thing is, the system we use, it's older than this, but part of the system we used 
was sort of related to measurements on the king of in England, right? And now England uses metric. They don't use feet and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it was President Carter tried to get us to switch over to metric, but it just never took. Yeah. So it certainly sounds like something Carter would do. Poor Carter. <laughs> Poor Jimmy. He's a nice guy. Trying to do a lot. But yeah, so that's it's just never going to fly. Or at least, you know, I, I, I have a sliver of hope that it will fly. Because the more, if you guys were brought up in metric, you would be able to communicate in science so much better. So you guys are at an automatic disadvantage because you're not brought up in metric. And when you take a science course, it is going to be metric. Chemistry right there. Somebody already said, you take physics, it's going to be metric. The language of science is in metric. You guys know about the, what was it, the polar, um, the Mars polar, whatever the hell it was. The, the, I think they talk about it in the book. The spacecraft that was sent up, here it is. The Mars Climate Orb Orb say that word. Orbiter. There it is, Jeff. The Mars Climate Orbiter. There's this I lost it. Uh, it cost a stupid amount of money. They didn't even tell oh here we go. A hundred twenty five million dollar spacecraft. They sent it up to Mars. One team was talking in feet and inches and the other team was talking in the right language, right? And so they sent the spacecraft up, and one team had programmed stuff in, and the, and the Mars rover's like, oh, I still got time, smash. <laughs> Oops, sorry, let's build another, yeah, sorry. That's uh, an immediate reason why you want to speak the same language with other people on your team. And in this case, I keep saying language, and it is a language. It's the language of measurements, right? And, and, and you're brought up in the wrong language to participate fully in science. It sucks. So, oh well. All right, that's enough, Jeff. Um, so let's get into, what kind of units do you guys know? Uh, even if we don't use metric all the time, you should know, like, uh, what, what's the biggest unit of length that you happen to know? Kilometer. Kilometer. <coughs> that's good. That's a good, useful, that's how far apart two towns are. I think somewhere on the I-5 or the 15, there's a sign that actually uses metric. There's like one sign I've seen in California. I think headed north, I saw it use metric, and I was like, oh! <laughs> I was excited for a second, but that's uh, uh, just me. Um, so yeah, we got kilometer. Now there are bigger things than kilometer, uh, and in fact, if you have your book on page 438, how many of you guys have ever seen Back to the Future, the movie? All right. If you haven't raised your hand, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you do yourself a favor. Become a part of the culture and watch that thing. Right now, I'm not forcing you, but do it. Um, they had in there. What was funny is the people that wrote it didn't really know how to pronounce it correctly. So I don't know if you guys remember how much power the the DeLorean took. 1.21 gigawatts. Gigawatts, and it's actually supposed to be gigawatts, right? So you have gigahertz. You guys have computers. We talk about gigahertz. No. Gigaflops, teraflops, petaflops. They have all the, They have a lot more on page 438 in the book. All right? Terabytes, petabytes. Right? Uh, it's crazy. Zeta, yada. Oh yeah. Yada is just 10 to the 24th. Yeah, baby. And then you go the other way, huh? Oh, peta. Yeah, peta. But, but peta. Right? People for the ethical treatment of algebra. Um, I just, I just made that up, so give it a little bit more leeway. Uh, then you go the other way, how, 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 what's the smallest one you guys know? What's some small stuff here? Small metric. Decimeter. Millimeter, I like it, millimeter. Decimeter. Decimeter's in there, let me put, let me, let me put some more room here. Centimeter. What's in between decimeter and millimeter? It's a little bit bigger than a millimeter. Centimeter. Centimeter. Good, so those are the ones we definitely know. I'm glad somebody knew decimeter, that's cool. And I'll go ahead and put meter up here. There's a good old full meter. Right. And below this, if you take chemistry, or if you take, well, astronomy would probably go this way, unless you're talking about wavelengths of light, and you're talking about nanometers. And you also have angstroms that kind of worms its way in there. Then you have uh, femtometers and so forth. That's really exceptionally small units of measurement. How are we doing so far? And again, it's all on page 438. You're not going to have to know outside of what I'm going to put on the board, though. Don't freak out. Okay. Anybody know anything else? There's two more right in here. 
And these are definitely the two fewest used. Hectometer. Hectometer. And decimeter. No. Deca. I got decimeter. Yeah. Deca. There's a deca. So the way I keep these separate is that one's smaller, so damn, that's big. Right. No. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I'll be all right. What about big D? Big old D. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, strike. Uh, sorry, Dean, you had to choose this one to watch. Um, all right, good cover. Good. So these two are definitely, I don't know if most of us haven't heard of those. Right? <laughs> We're going to come back from this. We're going to make it. So here's the beautiful thing about this. Uh, let me first show you how easy it is to convert in metric, and then I'll show you how to remember how to write these, because those two are connected. So what the hell do I mean? Every step I take is a step of 10. So in one kilometer, there are 10 hectometers, or hectometers. That's completely optional which way you want to say it. Uh, in every hectometer, or hectometer, there is one decameter. You guys, uh, what did I just say? Ten, ten decameters. Yeah. So in every one of these, there's ten of those, and every and that's the step. So how many of these are there? If one of these is how many of these? A hundred, right? So one kilometer equals one to one hundred decameters. So I don't know if you noticed what just happened. A beautiful thing just happened. I'm connecting how many times I move the decimal place, and the direction I move the damn thing. By, based on how I move between the units. So if I had uh, 0.076 hectometers, how many centimeters would that be? How many times would I move the decimal? How many steps are there? One, two, three, four. So then I move the decimal. One, two, three, and then I add a zero. Done. Much easier than freaking tablespoons in a gallon. Hello. All right. Google can tell you that, but I don't want to have to always go to Google. Or Siri. I don't know Siri will know. She will. She will? Good, Siri. She knows something. All right. <laughs> I didn't say tablespoons. Ah. All right. So, so let me see how, if I can do this. You ready? You guys, don't, don't say anything. Uh, if I had... 48.7 uh, millimeters. How many decimeters is that? There you go. Oh. Yeah, so how many places do I move? I'm starting here, right? Millimeters. And I want to go to decimeters. So I go one, two, that way. So one, two, so point four eight seven. Kick ass. Live off of that for a while. Like <laughs> now I cannot make. I can't. It's impo physically impossible for you to make it any easier than that. That's that's it. So the whole thing then, if I give you, and you know I am, I'm going to give you several of these in a row on a test or a quiz, and you're going to have to do it. And I'm not going to give you this. You're just going to have to remember this. So this is the one kind of place where I'm completely cool with mnemonic devices. For example, I hate freaking Sokotoa. I hate freaking foil. All right, so if you know those two and you love them, I'm sorry. They're only useful for a little while and then they kill you. All right? But this is purely just to remember how to pattern these things. There's nothing mathematical behind it. It's just remembering the order. So I don't know if anybody knows the saying. You know, like every good boy does fine. Who's a musician? Every good boy does fine. You know that one, right? Uh, please excuse my dumbass son. We know that one. Uh, my very educated mother just served us. We saw that one on the other test. Or Pluto was in there somewhere. Uh, so anybody know this one? King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk. Kick ass. So King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk. All right, so that's how you remember. Because if you can write these, then you can make these conversions stupid fast. And if you were brought up in this system... You would know how long a hectometer is. The same way if I say a mile, can you envision that somehow in your head? You know roughly how long that is, right? I'm not saying you could actually walk it or something. But you know it's, it's a decent size I'm going to walk, but it's not that far I'm going to drive. I mean, you know it. But if I say uh, 37 hectometers, do you have any 
anything in your head? Did you have any connection to what that is? I have no idea. Would that take me long? I don't know. I wasn't brought up in it. Right? It's just like what we did. This is why I love doing this section after chapter 4. It's just like if you were brought up in an old Roman time, you would know the Roman numbers. Well, if you were educated, if you are lucky enough. Right? You would just know them on sight. Well, that's 8,000 words. Or however they said it. Right? And that's... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, anyway, sorry. so that's how you remember to set this up. Now, here's the other beautiful thing: that, as if it wasn't good enough. I feel like I'm a late night uh, infomercial here, but uh, it slices, it dices, and, and this is just length. But what is it for weight or for mass? More appropriately, grams. Grams. So that kilograms, hectograms, decagrams, gram, gram, and all the way. And then it would be King Henry died giggling. And for volume, this is the one place we see metric all the time. What's the volume? Go go by uh, a what of of soda? Liters. A two liter of soda, right? So it's liters. Liter, liter, liter. And then if I said one kiloliter, well that would be a hundred decaliters. The the process doesn't change. What do we got? Feet to inches, that's one thing. And then tablespoons to gallons, that's a totally different thing. What? What? Metric just says it's freaking 10 all the time because we got 10 fingers, man. Our system is based on 10. Might as well do it that way. How are we doing? Is that? I can't make that any easier. It's impossible. All right. So let me, let me just shut up for a minute. Let me give you several to do real quick. So do these conversions and don't say anything, just do them. Until you take a step, that's one. Okay. So you start at zero. Okay. It's almost like the sequence thing. But, yeah. All right. So this is a know it, an understand it, or you don't moment here. Uh, so I start at dag. Dag. And I want to go to senna grams. i got to take how many steps? the decimal. One, two, three, so it's 43.2. And if I start at milliliters, milliliters, and I want to go to hectoliters, one, two, three, four, five. So what does that become? Good. Point four to one, nine, two. And then finally, 38.1 centigrams, and I want to go to kilograms, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, eight, chapter. 
And so I want to go one, two. So then how many zeros go in front? Three. One, two, three, four, five. I just keep thinking I counted wrong. Yeah, so one, two, and then there's going to be three, one, two, three zeros in front, kick ass. Let me do one more kind of problem with you guys. Let me see if you guys get the point of this. This is in the homework too. Um, <clears throat> if I've got uh, 0.012 uh, deciliters, I'll tell you this. What units do I have to go to so it's a whole note? So there, there's no decimal place. So that's kind of like a different. I'm, I'm telling you what I want the answer to be. I want it to be 12. And my question is 12 what? Because you can now you're just kind of seeing how many steps would I have to take? One, two, three. So I got to take one, two, three centimeters. I love it. So that's another thing about metric. You can take almost any number and move it to another unit until it is a whole number. Makes it easy to compare it to other things. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, if we grew up with this, oh my God, we could do so much. Okay. Um, all right. So that, that's, that's section 8.1. 8.1 introduces King Henry died Monday and uh, just the basic idea of what these are. Um, anything else I want to say in here? Not really. Uh, they, they, they talk about this already, but later they're going to have a whole little section devoted to this. But what's the metric unit of temperature? Celsius. I love it. And why does it make sense? Because freezing in Celsius, anybody know? Zero. Now, freezing in Fahrenheit makes total sense. Of course, it's what? 32. That's, uh, that only makes sense. Hopefully, you're catching the sarcasm. And boiling in our in Fahrenheit, what's boiling in Fahrenheit? Anybody know? Boiling water, by the way. You know, like boiling water. Boiling water. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And don't get all, what if I put some salt in it? Screw it. Just <laughs> nice, pure water. 212. And in Celsius, what is it? That's crazy, of course. So Celsius, of course, is the metric because it went from zero, freezing, 100, boiling. Next problem, right? But well, we use 32. I forget the history. I looked it up a while back. But, um, maybe no, I would use 32. i got to look that up. I keep forgetting to look it up. I knew it at some point in my life. All right, we'll figure it out. Um, so that's going to come up later. We're going to see... a. a the conversions between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Anybody know another temperature scale, by the way? Kelvin. Kelvin. Anybody ever, chemistry people, you've heard of Kelvin. Uh, anybody heard of the idea of absolute zero? Absolute zero is where everybody's dead. There's no energy anywhere, right? So I, I was actually doing research at Old Dominion University on the East Coast where we're taking rubidium atoms and cooling them down to just above absolute zero. Because when you do that to an atom, it kind of spreads out. So I made what I call this big collection of cookies that kind of spread out. We got this big mega atom. We could poke it. It wasn't like this big, by the way. <laughs> no, this is a bit of an exaggeration. Right? But uh, we got it really close to, uh, to absolute zero, and then we could do stuff. It's kind of cool. And they were going to try to make a maser out of that, which is a matter laser, but I tried not to think about that too much. Right? Yeah, we can kill more people. Um, but the idea of absolute zero is in Kelvin, zero degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius, does that mean the absence of heat? Zero degrees Fahrenheit, does that mean all heat is gone? How do I know that's not true? Because I can go below zero. I can get colder than zero Fahrenheit. So that I can get colder than zero Celsius. Cool. Anybody happen to know the temperature where Celsius and Fahrenheit agree? They're both the same number? All right, we'll actually derive that later. I know it, I just can't get off the tip of my tongue. I know the feeling. Uh, okay, so that'll come, we can, we can actually derive it, we can actually figure it out later. Um, it's a nice number too, it's, it's a nice whole number, it's negative. So just a little bit of the next section, we're headed out of here early, I think. Um, so let me ask you this, this is all one dimension. So when you measure a length of something, you're just doing one dimension, right? 
The minute I want to go into two dimensions, now I'm talking about square units. So, so let's look at a couple of simple examples to get a feel for this. Um, and I'll tell you what, let, let's go back to the units we unfortunately know. Uh, one foot is how many inches? Well, and we've seen a problem like this already. In the book, we saw a problem involving volume with this. Uh, but if I just take a square, a, a square, a, a <coughs> one square foot, pretend that's a square. How do I figure out how many square inches that is? It's not going to be 12 square inches, right? So this foot can be broken up into 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it works perfectly. Is that 14? Oh, well, too bad for me. One less left. Here. And I can do the same thing along this way, right? So it'd be 12 by 12. So one foot is 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches. So how do I figure out what the area is in inches squared? Length yeah, length times width. So this would be, so one square foot is 144 square inches. So look at what happened that's so beautiful here. Let me see if you guys can do this without drawing a picture. Do you guys see the one foot is 12 inches. One square foot is 12 square square inches. So what if I had uh, one yard is how many feet? Three feet. So one square yard would be nine, nine square feet. I love it. I don't have to draw a picture. I just square it. So what about, so that would be a, a square that is one yard by one yard, right? It would be a total of, of uh, nine square feet. So what if I had a, a, a box that was one yard by one yard by one yard up? There's my box here. Uh, what would its volume be in feet, cubic feet? 27? Yeah, cube three. So you square three to see what it is in square units. You cube it to see what it is in cubic units. Come on, Jeff, that's too easy. Yes, that's the way it works. I got it. Kick ass. So in a square, in a, in a cubic yard, I could fit 27 little cubic feet. 27. All right, I like it. Maybe. Maybe. So then with metric, the same kind of stuff happens, of course. So if I had a one square centimeter, can somebody tell me how many square millimeters that would be? You might have to draw a picture because this is units we're not used to. So they got one square centimeter. I just do what? Oh, yes. Answer? Sure. 100 square millimeters? Kick ass. So one centimeter is how many millimeters? 10. 10. So that's 10, that's 10. So overall, the area is going to be 100 square millimeters. I love it. So it's a general idea that holds no matter what units you're using. So you said you're going from single units to square units to cubic units. Yes. We won't go to any higher dimensions. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the last piece? Oh, here we go. This is the interesting thing. And this is not quite true anymore, to be honest, but it's close enough. We're going to use it still. Just because of the way they define things. Um, one cubic centimeter, and, and just be really, let me see how precise they get. Uh, do they get precise at all? Oh, that's right. It's not yet. It's when we go to weight. So that's a work. So one cubic centimeter will hold one milliliters worth of stuff. So those are both units of volume. We know the liter is units of volume, right? And cubic centimeters is definitely volume. That's length times width times height. So it kind of makes sense. They should be some kind of way to set those two equal. But one cubic centimeter just happens to hold exactly one milliliters worth of something. So let me see if you guys can derive this. Some of you guys look so beat up. I'm sorry. Uh, one cubic decimeter. How many times bigger is the last thing I'm going to do to you? Okay. How many times bigger is this than this? 
There are a lot of guesses. <laughs> Ten times. Uh, yeah. Maybe just keep adding zeros. Keep your guesses. Even if you said it right, I'm not going to take it if it's a guess. So here's one cubic centimeter. Everybody know how to make a cubic? There. Yours has to look better than mine. Good Lord. If it don't, you should feel bad. Right? If you draw worse than me, you actually should feel bad. Um, so here's one centimeter. So there's one cubic centimeter, right? So how do I convert it to a cubic decimeter? Length times width times height. Uh, let's go the other way to make this a little bit. Let's make this. Let's take it. Let's start with decimeter, so we don't get all freaky. One decimeter is how many centimeters? Ten. Yeah, one step over, right? So ten. This will be ten. So one. Get it in. One cubic decimeter is equal to ten times ten times ten. A thousand. So if one of these is a thousand of these. One of these can hold a thousand of these. And what's a thousand milliliters? What's a better way to say a thousand milliliters? One liter. Right? Because I, I didn't get into all the specifics, but become a leader. Jeff, you can do it. I'm a follower. No, just, just, just don't do stupid jokes right now. <laughs> So one, uh, a thousand of these, because it's one, two, three steps away, but also milli, I know you guys know milli is a thousand. Like somebody saw the millipede, it actually doesn't have a thousand, they're like, it's got to be like a thousand feet on that thing. It's called like a millipede. <laughs> right? And the centipede's like, yeah, I got less feet, what the hell's wrong? Uh, I don't know, that's probably not the real history. So if that's a thousand times bigger than that, how many, it can hold a thousand of these, which is one liter. And then what do you think is a thousand times bigger than this? Centi, deci, a cubic meter is a thousand times bigger. Because a meter is ten times bigger, so a cubic meter is ten cubed a thousand times bigger. So what can one cubic meter hold? How many of these? It's a thousand times bigger, so it can hold a thousand liters, which is also known as a... Kilometer. That's right. I forgot to ask if we have any drug dealers in today. The other, or anybody that watches CSI or something stupid. Uh, yeah, you kilos, right? Kilos of drugs, right? Right. Okay. Uh, I guess they still say that. They used to say that. Back then. So, so when we get to mass, we're going to actually talk about now. Why would it be different? I'm going to later. We're going to do one more row. I'm going to say if I filled this with H2O, it has so much mass. Why would it be different if it was Kool-Aid or something? If I filled it with Kool-Aid, or if I filled it with buckshot, lead balls, fill it with lead, why would this mass be different? Because, because of what? So if I fill a, 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 a cubic centimeter, uh, let's do a cubic yeah, centimeter. That's fine. Fill a cubic centimeter. Fill it with some water. It's going to weigh something, right? Now pour it out, and now fill it with lead. I don't know why you said me that time. Is it going to be the same weight? No, of course not. Because of because of what? Because of what? Density. I love it. Right? I am your density. <laughs> Sorry, so back to the future scene. No, that's an awesome scene. All right, that's enough. I am loopy, so that is plenty. Don't subject you to me anymore. So we, we made it, actually we made it through A2, accidentally.